Ah, sports. Where athletes bring us career-defining moments. The Miami Heat, they've done it. They win their first championship in franchise history. Tomlinson, off the left side. Tomlinson sidesteps. Now they have history books. Dynasties being created and destroyed. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. Unreal. And of course, the unthinkable. And me? Well, I'm here to give you the truth. The one aspect that will never lie? The numbers. Intro, man. Let me know how y'all feel about that, you know? Let me know how y'all feel about that intro. But you know, it's Thursday. We got a game tonight, but before we get into that, before we get into any predictions, any news, you know, we got to talk about the Monday night game. The Cowboys at the Giants. We picked the Giants. We got that one right. Um, the game started 9-3 Giants. And they actually... Um, a black cat <laughs> popped up on the field and decided that he wanted to steal the show. So it just kind of ran around. <laughs> um, everybody enjoyed it, really. <laughs> but the game started, it was 9-3 before that black cat came. And the cat ran off the field. And after that, it was 24-6 Cowboys. <laughs> 21 fourth quarter points. Stupid black cat. <laughs> Gotta be real, man. The Cowboys just came out sluggish, dropping passes. You know, they came off a of bye week. A little bit of rust, but they knocked it off. Fourth quarter, they said, all right, for real, let's let's get this done. It shouldn't even be close. So the Cowboys got the dub there. That being said, I am now 88, 46 and 1 on my picks for the season. 86, 88 right, 46 wrong, and one tie. Of course, that tie being week one with the Cardinals and the Lions is what it is. So getting into the news, we got no more London games this year. Um, last week was the last London game. So no more London games. Don't have to worry about waking up at 8.30 in the morning on a Sunday <laughs> to watch football. Um... Also, Josh Gordon went to the Seahawks after being released by the Patriots. So we'll see how that works out. We'll see um, how much he gets to play there. If he fits in, Russell Wilson, we know, is having an MVP year. That just adds another weapon to his artillery. So uh, Jacoby Brissett was limited in practice today. So we don't know. Uh, his status for the upcoming game has not been revealed to us. T.Y. Hilton also did not practice at all. So, Brissett was limited. Hilton did not practice. Don't know if either one of them are going to be ready to go this weekend. This week has the most teams on a bye. There's six teams on a bye this week. The Eagles, the Patriots, the Redskins, the Jaguars, the Texans, and the Broncos. So, let's go ahead and get into the Week 10 predictions. Starting tonight with the Chargers at the Raiders. Monte, we here now. <laughs> Week 10, what's up? What's up? Chargers at Raiders. Chargers won four straight in this matchup. We swept them two years in a row. This game features two opposite defense, trending in opposite directions. So the Chargers defense, we've seen them play great. We saw their last game. Against the Packers, pretty much shut down Aaron Rodgers the whole game. The Raiders just can't seem to stop anybody, but they keep scoring, so they're they're having shootouts and they're winning the shootouts. So 
The Chargers are eighth in points per game allowed. The Raiders are 26 in points per game allowed. Oakland is seventh against the run. Last versus the pass. Dead last in the league against the pass. Oakland is six in rushing, though. Josh Jacobs is the seventh leading rusher in the NFL. Oakland is the second least sacked team. Derek Carr is the second least sacked quarterback in the league. With only nine sacks, the Chargers are seventh in that category, having allowed Phil Rivers to be sacked 16 times. Oakland is 25th in sacks defensively. So as we talked about earlier in the year, they have trouble getting to the quarterback and finishing. But, but you do have to take into account that Rivers is the passing leader in the NFL. He's number one in passing against this dead last Oakland secondary that just hasn't looked great. Uh, that has field day written all over it. <laughs> but you do have to take into account for the Chargers defense, you have to stop Darren Waller, the, the Raiders tight end. He's their leading receiver, leading by almost 200 yards receiving for their receiving core, playing exceptional this year. Um, Oakland has the most first downs allowed via penalty. So this team has to play much discipline, much more discipline coming into this game. We know Phillip Rivers is going to try to get him with some hard counts. He's going to try to create situations where you can get defensive holding. We know that's an automatic first down. Things like that. Uh, Oakland is has the second best offense on third down in the league at 49.5%. So, but I do think, I do think Rivers versus this dead last Oakland passing defense it's just asking for trouble. So I'm, I'm going to have to go with my charges. I'm going to have to go with my boys. We ride in the momentum. Two games in a row. The defense has played lights out. The offense found some rhythm last week with the new offensive coordinator. I'm going to have to go with my charges. This is a tough pick, honestly. Honestly, it's a tough pick. We're going to Oakland. Short week. They have the advantage in, in terms of time and place. We still have to travel. They didn't have to travel anywhere since they're playing at home. But I do not expect this game to be a blowout. <laughs> I'm not even going to say that. I do expect fight from both teams. I got to go with my charges, though, man. So moving on to the next game, starting the early games on Sunday. Chiefs at Titans. Tennessee won the last three in this matchup, including the Mariota wild card win. But Mariota's not playing this game. Ryan Tannehill is. If y'all remember that, Chiefs. Titans game where Mariota threw the pass. It was deflected back to him. He ran in for a touchdown. They won the game by one point. I mean, it is what it is. Tennessee's defense is only allowing 18 points per game, but we know their offense does not score a lot of points, and we know this Chiefs offense does. Now, the big key in this game is that Tennessee has, been, has allowed the most sacks in the league with 38. 38 sacks. 38 sacks allowed. Versus this Kansas City pass rush that's seventh in the league in sacks with 26 themselves. So I feel like Kansas City can win the field position battle, if nothing else. So we'll see. We'll see how the coaches work around that, how uh, how Andy Reid decides to take advantage of that. I got to go Chiefs. I got to go Chiefs. I think Patrick Mahomes is playing. Even if he's not playing, I still expect the Chiefs to win this game. So I'm going Chiefs on the road. Cardinals at Buccaneers, not a very entertaining game. The Buccaneers are one of three teams that have not won a home game. The other two teams being the Redskins and the Bengals. Arizona has won three in a row in this matchup. I'm going Arizona. Um, not very entertaining, but I'm going Arizona here. Um, Giants at Jets. Giants won five of the last six. Nobody really cares about this game. It's the New York game, neither one of these teams are relevant. I'm just going to go Giants on this one. Falcons at Saints. Saints won three in a row in this matchup. Both teams are coming off a of bye. The Saints are looking great. The Falcons are looking terrible. It's that simple. Falcons are one and seven. The Saints record is opposite of that, seven and one. We're going Saints. We're going Saints at home. Bills at Browns. Bills won three out of the last four in this matchup. 
The Bills are undefeated on the road as well. This is another bad matchup. 6-2 Bills versus the 2-6 Browns. I got to go Bills. <laughs> so a couple of easy picks back-to-back. -back. Ravens at Bengals divisional game. A.J. Green was supposed to come back, but I just got the alert before this video that he's not coming back. He told the reporters that he's not going to be ready this week. Doesn't really matter anyway. Ryan Finley, Finley is starting at quarterback. That doesn't matter either. Both teams are coming off by. Well, actually, the Bengals are coming off the bye. Excuse me. Still doesn't matter. <laughs> Going Ravens. Ravens are rolling right now, riding that high. This would be a trap game, but Bengals just don't have it. They don't have enough to pull out the upset right here. Lions at Bears. Lions won nine of the last 12. The Bears keep sliding, but will not change quarterbacks. <laughs> I just, I can't pick them. I can't pick them. I got to go Lions on the road. The Bears have lost four in a row. They're not really changing anything. So it seems to me that they're stubborn and they're not willing to change to fix this this year when they have a good defense and they have pieces that can get them in the playoffs. But we're going to go Lions. Starting the late games, Dolphins at Colts. Colts are simply the better team. They won six out of the last seven in this matchup. The quarterback does not matter. It doesn't matter if Jacoby Brissett plays. To be honest, I wouldn't even start Jacoby Brissett in this game. The Dolphins have allowed the most points per game in the league, and they are 30th in scoring. There's no way they win this game. There's absolutely no way they win this game. <laughs> Gotta go Colts at home. Rams at Steelers. Pittsburgh has won three in a row this season and in the matchup. They are 26th in rushing offensively, 27th in passing offensively, so they have a look very impressive moving the ball on offense. The Rams are 8th in scoring, 5th in passing, the 4th least sacked team in the league with only 12 sacks allowed. Pittsburgh is the least sacked team, team in the league. <laughs> um... They're fifth defensively in sacks with 29 sacks. But they struggle with teams that score a lot of points. They seem to struggle with teams that know how to score. Um, here's a key stat for you guys. When the Pittsburgh offense does not score 27 or more points at home, they're 0-2. When they do score more than 27, 27 or more, 3-0. So Pittsburgh has to score offensively. Get this thing going. We all know Pittsburgh is great at taking the ball away. If the Rams take care of this ball, I've said it all season, if you can take care of the ball versus the Steelers, you're going to win every time this year. But they're so great at taking the ball away from the opposing team. So with that being said, I got to go Rams. <laughs> I just believe they'll be able to move the ball pretty easily. They can even settle for field goals. This game could end 15-7, to seven, and they can win it that way. But... Moving on, Panthers at Packers, one of the games of the week. Packers are seventh in rushing. No, Panthers, excuse me. Panthers are seventh in rushing. C-Mac is the second leading rusher in the NFL. They are 25th in passing. So not that great of a passing team, but we know what Christian McCaffrey can do anywhere on the field. So just be on the lookout for him. They are 27th on third down. So when they get to third down, they have not found a way to convert. 32%. On third down. Panthers defense is number one in sacks. That is huge coming into this game because if you watch the Packers game last week against the Chargers, Joey Bolson and Melvin Ingram had a field day. So they're going to have to find a way to stop the Panthers pass rush this week. Both defenses are bottom 10 against the run though and I think that favors the Panthers. Green Bay is 24th against the run, and Carolina's 26. I do believe, though, because the Packers are at home and the Panthers just got tore up by the 49ers a few weeks ago, I do believe that the Panthers play differently when they play a great team. And that's just me being honest. They don't look like they can play with the big team. They, they can beat all the sorry teams, just beat them to a pulp. But when the good teams come to town, or when they go to the good teams even, they just don't seem to show up the same. So I got to go Packers in Lambeau. They're so tough to beat there. Got to go Packers. 
Vikings at Cowboys, the night game. The Vikings won seven of the last ten. The Dallas defense is fifth in points per game. The Minnesota defense is fourth in points per game. So we might see a low scoring 10 to 7, 13 to 10 game here. Dallas is number one in total offense, though. Number one in total offense, fifth in points per game, fourth in rushing and passing. Minnesota's offense is third in rushing with Dalvin Cook leading the NFL in rushing yards. Dallas, this is a key stat here. Dallas is the best team on third down in the NFL this year. 50% of the time they converted for a first down. They have the second best defense on third down as well, only allowing 27%. So, with that being said, I got to go with the Cowboys at home on prime time. This will be a huge win for them because a lot of people think they can't beat the good teams. But the Vikings, I'm saying it before the game starts. Listen, the Vikings are a good team. The Cowboys will beat the Vikings. So, I've gotta, I got to go Dallas at home. Seahawks at 49ers, the game of the week. 7-2 and two. Seahawks go into candle. Well, I almost said candlestick. I'm sorry. <laughs> they go to the 49ers. Let's just say they go Levi Stadium, 49ers, the undefeated 49ers, 8-0. The Seahawks won 12 of the last 14. Russell Wilson has owned this team. Jimmy G, this is his first start against the Seahawks, so we have no clue how he's going to look against the Seahawks. We just don't. So Seattle's offense is 7th in points per game and 27 points per game. Eighth in rushing, ninth in passing, fourth in total offense. This offense is clicking on all cylinders. Like I said, Russell, Russell Wilson is looking like the MVP. He's looking like the MVP there. 39% on third down, which is 16th, dead in the middle of all teams in the NFL. Russell Wilson only thrown one interception. When he did throw that interception, they lost to the Ravens. So, key to this game, quite simply, is to pick off Russell Wilson. <laughs> San Francisco's offense is third on third down, third down percentage, and 48% of the time they convert on third down. Very good for third down team. A lot of their targets go to George Kittle as well as Tevin Coleman on third down. Second in rushing, 171 yards per game. You, you can't get much better than that. Like, come on, 22nd in passing, so they don't pass a lot either. But they don't have to. 171 yards per game rushing. Why would you pass? Fourth least sack team in the league. They do a great job. Phenomenal job of protecting Jimmy G. Defensively, Seattle's defense is 22nd in points per game. They do give up a bunch of points. They're 28th against the pass. So, have to take advantage of that if you're the 49ers. You don't have to run this game. But you know you can run. So, We'll see. San Francisco's defense is second in points per game with 12. 12 points per game allowed. They are first against the pass. So we got the MVP at quarterback for the Seahawks against the first, the best pass defense in the NFL. They are also third on third down percentage with 27.5% of the time they allow the offense to convert. So I got to go... With the 49ers here, I got to go with the 49ers. If they can take care of business on first and second down, get the Seahawks in the third and medium, third and long, I believe they can control this game. But easier said than done against Russell Wilson, looking like an MVP. That's all I got for y'all, man. I thank y'all for watching. Drop a like, drop a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. Tune in to the game tonight. We got a good one. All the primetime games are good this week. Chargers, Raiders, Mate, I'm going to be hitting you up, man. You already know what it is. It's your boy, Jay. We out of here.